welcome to this episode of the How to Choose Happiness and Freedom Show. I am your host, Lauren Foster, happiness coach and founder of Be Happy First. And that's what we're here to talk about. So this is our month on intention oh, and attention. And this week we're talking about perspective. And as always happens, life brings me information to talk about during any kind of lesson, any kind of class, any kind of show that I'm doing, usually, often it just arrives in the form of an email or a Facebook post or, you know, just information that's like, oh, cool, this is relevant, I will share this. Well, now it's showing up in my life. So I have all of these life lessons to teach you today. And I will also be going off myself and practicing what I preach and doing all of the things that we're going to talk about today. So where we are right now is we're talking about how no matter where you go, if you try to escape your circumstances, if you try to move or change boyfriends or change husbands or change your hairstyle or get some plastic surgery, you know, all of these things that we think are going to make things better that are outside of us, never wind up doing that unless we're able to get back to the root of things and get in touch with who we really are and with our our higher power and access our own power to be happy on purpose no matter what before any of those things are going to work out the way that we want them to and it's so tempting and so I, I, I want to tell a little story about how when when I arrived here, one, one of the glitches that I arrived at along my path, and this is to demonstrate how we want to be very much in love with where we're going, but we don't want to be attached to how we get there. And so and I want to describe to you what that, what that looks like. So as you know, in 2011, I was at rock bottom bankrupt homeless, living with my sister, all of that. And I, I threw, tossed everything aside, gathered up all my tools and started to build my vision of where I wanted to be next in my life. My simple, but beautiful and really happy vision of this place that I live in now. So I knew what I wanted. I wanted, you know, I, I didn't want neighbors that would be really present. You know, I didn't mind if people lived in the, you know, in the distance, but I, I, I wanted to have the freedom to come and go as we please, especially my dogs. I wanted them safe to wander around their own neighborhood and not get hit by a car and not, you know, get in trouble with any, anybody out, out there. Um, and I knew how much land I wanted. I knew how much money I wanted to spend on this place. I knew all of these things. Well, so we lived in a little basement apartment that was 250 square feet. And on the weekends and any chance that we got, my dog Rocky and I would go out and look at places that met these criteria. And I found a place that I really, really wanted. It was on a street called Tumbling Creek Road. I mean, how perfect is that? And I was abs I was convinced that this was the place, but things weren't happening. I wasn't able to get the financing. Remember, bankrupt. I, you know, none of the pieces were falling into place. So at that point, I had a choice to make. I could have decided that this was the place and gotten attached to that answer to my dream and begun to push and begun to try and manipulate things and try to make things happen so that this place could become mine. Or I could step back and go, you know what? The reason that this is not flowing easily and happily and joyfully is because this isn't the place. There is something else better that is coming. And so that's what I did. I went back to doing all the things that we're going to talk about today and being aware and open to any suggestions or ideas or opportunities that came along, but not being attached to those. So, so do you see how that works? It's being happy with exactly what I had, where I was, and the way everything was in the given moment, while eagerly anticipating how the rest of my dream was going to unfold was the trick to getting this to happen. So, you know, fast forward a, a couple of, I, I, you know, a few months after I let go of that place and opened my heart and mind to 
other opportunities, I found this place. It was, and it was way better, way more perfect, way more in line with what my dream really, really was. And so we, we have lived here in this little mountain paradise for seven years now. Well, now the things that I, some of the things that I loved, circumstances beyond my control, are beginning to change. And so I have a whole lot of choices that I have to make at this point now. So now that we're no longer as free as we were, my, my dogs went nuts on Tuesday and they might go nuts again today because someone on the neighboring property is chopping down trees that, you know, I, I don't know why they're on my driveway and, but, but I have no control over that. And and I have no say, I, you know, I can't, even if I wanted to or thought it was a good idea to go, hey, stop cutting down trees, I can't, that's not within my power. And, you know, there are new dogs in the neighborhood that chase my cats. And so it's so tempting to begin going, ah, and narrowing in and focusing all these things that are going wrong, that are displeasing me and making me unhappy. <laughs> Nothing can make me unhappy. Or... I can choose. This is such the, the huge word, guys, that the, the word is to choose where I'm going to put my attention. Now, my instinct is to vote with my feet and just get the hell out of here. Like, fine, I'll just move. This is what I've done my whole life. I've, I've, I counted up this morning for my private audience that I've moved 21 times that I can remember throughout my life. And so, but now I know better. Now I know that this can work itself out in infinite ways and that the universe has ways for me to get to my next goal, which is more property and more freedom and a, a bigger house that's my lodge, that's a meditation center, that's a retreat center. And, you know, I, I have this big dream of hiking trails and little meditation gardens all throughout the property. And I had a vision of it being here in this spot. Well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. So the key is to stay in love with the dream Stay in love with where it is that I'm want, wanting to go, but not being attached to how I get there. So all of the things that are happening in this particular physical location may indeed work themselves out. And, and my, my, the Be Happy First Retreat Center may wind up being here, but maybe these things will not work themselves out. And that's my clue to be open to other locations that might be even better. But no matter what, in the meantime, it is in the best service of me to be happy anyway, in the meantime. And so what I will do is all of the things that we're going to talk about today, and I, I didn't even write them down. I'm just going to pull them out of my head, the things that I love to do to, to get myself feeling the way that I want to feel no matter what is going on out there in the world. No, I, I refuse to give the power over my happiness to circumstances that are beyond my control. And you know what? I guarantee as this conversation goes on, these things that are displeasing to me are going to drift out of my life through lack of attention because that's the way it works. You get what you pay attention to. You attract what you are. So one of my favorite things to, to do is the Abraham Hicks book, Ask and It Is Given, has a list of 22 different processes that will, that they're games, they're little things that you can do to help you manage your own emotional set point and to help yourself feel better. So I, I am in generally a, a very happy person, but lately my routines have been disrupted because of my sick dog. So he's no, he's not really comfortable with the stairs in, in my home. And that's where my morning ritual used to take place. I would sit at my altar upstairs and do my journaling and do my meditating and do some little candle rituals that I'll share with you someday. And, but now I, I don't want to leave my dog alone downstairs. So I've been just kind of abandoning that and coming downstairs and getting to work and starting my day in a different way. And I'm feeling that. I'm feeling the lack of having that time in the morning to really connect with my higher power, to really get in a place where 
I feel like I'm the master of my thoughts and I'm the master of my day. And so this very day, I will be reinventing this ritual so that I can do both. It's a yes and universe so that I can accommodate my dog that I love more than anything and not, you know, leave him alone and lonely in the morning. And, you know, how exactly I'm going to do that, I'm not sure, but I will. So I will make certain that I put back in place my morning rituals of deciding how I want my day to go and how I want to feel and how I want to show up during the day. So that's going to be happening. And then another of my favorites is what's called the list of positive aspects. This is also from, this is from the Ask and It's Given book, the one of the 22 processes. And the list of positive aspects is to, so if, if I were working on my relationship, say, if I wanted to have a better, stronger, deeper, more intimate relationship with my husband, if I had one, I would make a list of positive aspects about him. And I would do this every day. Say, these are all the things I love and appreciate about this man that I once loved enough to say I would love him forever. You know, so as you're putting your attention on the positive aspects of this relationship, you attract more of those things. And You know, you're inspired. If you've got your place and your mind into a place where you're really feeling the love for this person, that emanates all around you. And people who feel love are more likely to behave in a loving way. So without saying a word to anyone, you've improved your relationship. So I will be making a list of positive aspects about where I live and about everything that's going on in my physical world at this moment. Not, not about the place that I'm planning to go, not about the dream that I have for the future, but this list is to make me grateful and appreciative and feeling positive about the things that are happening in my physical life right this minute. So this works for anything that you want to improve in your life. So another of my favorite processes also from this book is called the focus wheel process. Now, if you are... Uh, Don't be offended, but if you're just a a downer, Debbie Downer, and you're always complaining and you're always feeling bad and you're always feeling sick and you're always feeling discontented, it's unreasonable to expect yourself to go straight from there all the way up to being loving and joyful and appreciative. So there's a process in between that you work your way up the emotional guidance scale, and you help yourself feel a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit more positive and a little bit more positive. And the more you do it, the more you make it a habit and the easier it becomes. And see that what happens though is people will get all gung-ho about this and they'll do it for a few days and then they let it go by the wayside and suddenly they're right back to their old patterns of thought and their old patterns of giving in to our in-brain negativity bias and back to complaining and back to looking at everything that's wrong and everything that we don't prefer. So in a focus wheel process, what you do is you just get a big sheet of paper and you draw a big circle and then you draw a little circle in the middle. And at the top of the page, you write how you're feeling. Be honest, you know? So Today, I would say I'm irritated and annoyed and powerless and feeling like my freedoms are taken away and that I'm limited and I don't like my neighborhood and you know whatever <laughs> is going on with you in the moment that's making you feel in a way you don't want to feel, put that at the top of the page. And then at the circle in the middle, you write how you would love to feel. And I would say I would love to feel free and in charge of my life and comfortable and safe in my home. So then you pretend like this is a clock all the way around. And at 12 o'clock, you write a thought that is true, that is closer to the way you want to feel. So I could say everything is temporary. All of the circumstances around me could change. Is Does that feel true to me? Yes, it does. And does it feel a little bit better than at the, all of this sucks? Yes. It does. And so I would write that at noon. And then at one o'clock, I would write another thought that feels better. Um, Everything always works out in the end. This I know, this I know to be true. So that goes on one o'clock. So all of the thoughts that you can think of until you've come up with 12 thoughts 
that feel better than where you are now and feel closer to how you want to feel. And then just notice at the end of 12, how much better you're feeling. And it's fun. And, you know, I even would get colored pencils and markers and write in different colors and make this into a fun and loving process that helps you feel like you're in charge of your emotional set point. So it's an amazing, wonderful, powerful exercise, the focus wheel. And again, that book is Ask and It Is Given by Abraham Hicks. And I, I highly, highly recommend it. All right. Now, the, the final thing, well, two final things I'm going to share with you is I will get back in touch and better acquainted with and more in love with my vision, the feeling of that vision and get myself out of the steps in between because we can't know those. I heard it said recently that if you can see your path, it's not your path. It's somebody else's path because your path hasn't been made yet. You're creating your path as you go. And I, I totally love that. I love that. I love having a picture of what it is that I want my life to look like in, you know, five, 10 years, and then get to be really in love with where I am now and eager to see what ideas and opportunities and chances the universe gives me that will move me in that direction. So this is your homework for this week. Take the thing that is troubling you the most in your life. If it's your health, if it's your relationships, if it's your financial health, it what whatever it is that you are not in love with, make a list of positive aspects about that thing, if possible. Now, so, sometimes you're like, you know what, I can't think of one single thing that's positive about this. If you can't, then make a list of positive aspects about something else. It, the only key is getting yourself in a place of feeling positive and looking for things to love and appreciate, which is the highest vibration. And that's where everything that you think you want in this physical world lives. So that, that's our ultimate goal is to, to get lined up with that. So I am off to make lists of positive aspects to review the journal playback and put back into place all of those exercises, which are to choose your magic orchid for the day, your thought that thrills you and makes you come alive every time that you think about it, your I am statements, your affirmation statements as to who you want to be and how you want your life to be, my I am creating statements, my to be statements of the things that are important to me today. And you know we're working on a happy and free on purpose 28 day challenge that's going to start on June the 1st. And whenever I get into that project, I, I love it. I love picturing the community that we're going to build within that program and the progress that we're going to make and the support we're going to give each other. So I'm going to do all of these things, and I encourage you to do that as well. That's your homework for this week. I can't say off the top of my head what the exact topic is. We're still in intention and attention next week. Um, we're wrapping up perspective today, and honestly, I can't remember what it's going to be next week. So we'll, we'll be surprised together. I will see you on Tuesday. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Between now and then, remember, happiness is a choice, and you can always choose to be happy first. I'll see you soon.